Hello everybody, welcome back to this channel. Uh, today we're going to cover the inverse Laplace transform. And uh, during the previous two lectures, we covered the definition of the Laplace transform and how we calculate um, uh, the uh, Laplace transform of a union step function and the union impulse function using the definition. Right? And in the uh, second lecture into the Laplace transform, we introduce the properties. Those properties really uh, makes the, all the Laplace transform kind of easy, right? You don't really need to use the definition. Even uh, the union step function, right? You can use the uh, integration property. Uh, you can get that from uh, the union step, union impulse function. So in that case, you one over s times one, right? That's the uh, Laplace transform union the step function. Uh, so if you uh, really know the uh, the the uh, basic definition and also the properties you can do all this uh, transformation uh, from the time domain to Laplace domain without problem right the other piece of the puzzle is uh, once we solved all the things we're going to cover how we solve the things in the S domain uh, in the next chapter and after you get the solution but solution is going to be in S domain I mean the function of s, right? Sometimes we're interested in the function of time. So you need to go back to the time domain, what we call the inverse Laplace transform. So there would be uh, four topics today, basically three topics. So the first one, before we do that, we just want to introduce the pole zero diagram. Um, that's one of the things very fundamental to uh, the, uh, the, uh, Laplace, the transform, the function of s in terms of the rational functions. And for two and three and two is just a basic concept, right? So the one thing is kind of, uh, is the very fundamental um, uh, property of this inverse Laplace transform is the uniqueness, right? And then we, we will look at the um, uh, two cases of inverse Laplace transform. One is with a simple pose, that means with a different pose, the, there, are no, there are no identical poles and also those poles will be real and this the last the second case is we have uh, see the complex poles mean the poles are complex numbers okay let's first look at the pole zero diagrams uh, as always we i always put the um put the uh link to the google collab notes in the description down below. So you, you can check these notes and you can run this code. Also, there's uh, associated uh, Python code in those Google Colab notes. Um, so let's see the pole zero diagram. So if you recall the, in, the Laplace transform, most of the Laplace transform will give us the result of the uh, rational functions. The rational functions. The rational functions. Rational function means the ratio of of uh, two polynomials. Right. So that's the rational function. You accept the delay. Remember the time domain translation property. If you have uh, if you want to do the Laplace transform of t minus a capital T, capital T means the time of delay, and then you will end up with something like a e2 minus st, right? s capital T. So in that case, that's not covered in this case, um, but sometimes even those, if the delay is very small, you can approximate those exponential functions with the rational functions. So that's a part of the foundation for uh, the, the digital system, the Z transform. Okay, and um, for the rational function, so in this course, we only kind of focus on the rational functions when we do the inverse Laplace transform. But if we do have that, uh, the exponential function, we can also based on, we can use the um, property of Laplace transform, we can also do that uh, if, if we really want to. Okay, and uh, first, let's look, focus on the uh, 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 the rational function. Let's see the rational function here. In there are two different ways of representing this, right? The polynomial here. Uh, there's so the b m, b sub m, b sub m one. Those are coefficients of the uh, polynomial on the numerator, 
and those are all real numbers b0 and also a n and that a n minus one and a a1 a0 these are all real numbers and maybe if you go to graduate school maybe you're looking at the uh, the transform with complex numbers uh, complex coefficients uh, but that's that's the total different uh, setup there and so these are in this case are all real numbers and the uh, n if n is if n if m is is less than n by the way i m is the order of the uh, polynomial in the numerator n is the order of the polynomial in the denominator if the order of the numerator is less than the order of the denominator and then we see an fs we call is is a proper is a proper rational function or we just see it's a proper or if the otherwise if m is equal to or greater than n and then fs is improper and alternatively this uh, is the um, the numerator and denominator polynomial can be factorized and in this case we have um, we have we have this the, the um, products of the uh, the different terms right so in this case we write the s the numerator as s minus z1 times s minus z2 so on and so forth so that would be m number terms because the order of the uh, numerator is m and for the denominator we use the p and so this one this is z1 and z2 and all the the all the roots of the numerator are the roots roots of the numerator non polynomial and it's called they are called so these are all called are called the zeros okay and the uh, the p1 and the p2 and the pn these are the roots of the denominator polynomial these are called the poles and the the k if you compare this the two different uh, two uh, different expressions and the k should be equal to and the k should be uh, equal to uh, you use a b sub m okay that should be b sub m over a sub a All right and so in this case um, and it, we call this as is the skill factor which is a factor and if you know the uh, poles and the zeros you pretty much know the trans function itself so that's the why you have this pole zero diagram sometimes you just uh, draw the position of the poles and you, when you draw the, uh, the diagram typically you will use the uh, the kind of little circle to represent position to denote the position of the pole the uh, zeros I use a cross little cross for the position of the poles uh, let's look at a the Google Colab knows I have a little piece of uh, have a, a little code here, and one thing here is I um, let's see if I have this trans function f s. Uh, so this is a polynomial. Um, 
So the numerator I had is 12s plus 5 and the denominator s squared plus 4s plus 13. And I'm, I'm trying to plot the zero and pole. So in this case, I, I, I didn't solve the roots. So the Python can solve the roots. I didn't put them in factor, uh, in factor form. And I'm going to use the control um, module or control library, if you will call. And this library is not in Google Colab. So what you can do is use the pip install. The pip install, in, uh, this, the, the, this line will code here. This line code will give, the first line it will code here will give you the, um, will install this module. Once you install it, then you can execute the code as, so you can import the control module and the do. So this is how you uh, use, uh, how you um, define the, uh, uh, define the system. So you have the uh, array here. The array is the polynomial, the coefficients of the denominator and then and the numerator, and also I have a coefficient of denominator. And then you can use the control, the transform function uh, to define the system in the control uh, library or the control module, and then use the PZ map to plot the zero and a pole uh, diagram. So in this case, and a zero, we have one zero, which is a negative. Based on this one, we can see that's a negative twelve, um, uh, negative five over twelve, right? So it should be less than one, and negative. Let, uh, and that's the uh, the zero. This is a little circle, and we have a two poles position. That's the uh, these are complex, and this complex we can see they are conjugate to each other, and that's the uh, pole zero diagram. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. We're going to look at the inverse Laplace transform.